extra, extra, read all about it. It's time to look closer into some vintage newspapers. So let's read a newspaper together. Today's newspaper is the Oregon State Journal from Eugene City, Oregon, dated July 4th, 1874. Carrier Pigeons Carrier pigeons were found to be of great service during the war between Germany and France. In many instances, they offered the only means of keeping communication. Acting upon the lesson taught by experience, the French government has decided to supply each of our fortresses with a thousand carrier pigeons and also to establish two general stations at which 60,000 will be kept. Simple Remedies One drop of salt butter relieves the earache very soon. One half teaspoon of salt in four teaspoonfuls of water will regulate a disordered stomach to be repeated two or three mornings before breakfast. Lemon juice and glycerin will cleanse and soften the hands. Hornaby of Fond du Lay attempted to go down to the cellar the other night to get a pitcher of cider. His wife warned him to be careful and not break the pitcher. He slipped on the first step and fell to the bottom, skinned his elbows and knees, bumped his head, broke his nose, tore his coat, and landed on the cellar floor a total wreck, but saved the pitcher. Mrs. Hornby called to him in a horrified accents. Mr. Hornby, Mr. Hornby, did you break the pitcher? He growled back. No, I didn't, but by thunder I will. And he did. We challenge the world. Dr. Henley celebrated IXL bitters, best tonic in use. Fryles Paragon Vapor Stove Burner. No wood, no coal, no coal gas, no stovepipe, no chimney, no smoke. No ashes, no dirt, no wood boxes, no coal scuttles, no kindling wood, but a friction match and the fire in full blast in half a minute. A young bachelor who had been appointed sheriff was called upon to serve an attachment against a beautiful young widow. He accordingly called upon her and said, Madam, I have an attachment for you. The widow blushed and said his attachment was reciprocated. You don't understand me. You must proceed to court. I know it's leap year, sir, but prefer you do the courting. Mrs. P, this is no time for trifling. The justice is waiting. The justice? Why, I prefer a parson. Women's Rights The following are the opening sentences of an address on this subject by Miss Skinner. Miss President, fellow women and male trash generally, I am here today for the purpose of discussing women's right and rescussing her wrongs and cussing the men. I believe sexes were created perfectly equal, with the women a little more equal than the men. I also believe that the world would be happy today if a man had never existed. They say that man was created first. Well, suppose he was. Ain't first experiments always failures? The only decent thing about him was his rib, and that went to make something better. And then they throw into our faces about an apple. I bet five dollars that Adam boosted her up the tree and then only gave her the core. Slander. It is not high crimes such as robbery and murder which destroy the peace of society. The village gossip, family quarrels, jealousies, and bickerings between neighbors, meddlesomeness, 
and tattling are the worms which eat into all social happiness. Mr. Cooley's Hat When Mr. Cooley came into church last Sunday, he placed his new hat just inside the pew in the aisle. Presently, Mrs. Pittman entered, and as she proceeded up the aisle, her abounding skirts scooped Cooley's hat and rolled it up nearly to the pulpit. Cooley pursued his hat with feelings of indignation, and when Mrs. Pittman took her seat, he walked back with his hat, brushing it with his sleeve. A few moments later, Mrs. Hopkins came into church, and as Cooley had again placed his hat in the aisle, Mrs. Hopkins' skirts struck it and swept it along about 20 feet and left it lying on the carpet in a demoralized condition. Cooley was singing a hymn at the time and didn't miss it. But a moment later, when he looked over the end of the pew to see if it was safe, he was furious to perceive that it was gone. He skirmished up the aisle after it again, red in the face and uttering sentences which were horribly out of place in the sanctuary. However, he put his hat down again and determined to keep his eye on it. But just as he turned his head away for a moment, Mrs. Smiley came in and Cooley turned around, only in time to watch his hat being gathered in under Mrs. Smiley's skirts and carried away by them. He started in pursuit and just as he did so, the hat must have rolled against Mrs. Smiley's ankles, for she gave a jump and screamed right out in church. When her husband asked her what was the matter, she said, there must be a dog under her dress, and she gave her skirts a twist. Out rolled Cooley's hat, and Mr. Smiley, being very nearsighted, thought it was a dog and immediately kicked it so savagely that it flew up into the gallery and lodged on top of the organ. Cooley, perfectly frantic with rage, forgot where he was, and holding his clenched fist under Mr. Smiley's nose, he shrieked, I have half a mind to bust you over the snoot. Then he flung down his hymn book and rushed from the church. He went home bareheaded, and the sexton brought his humiliating hat around after dinner. After this, Cooley intends to go to Quaker meetings where he can say his prayers with his hat on. <laughs>